I'm giving you sweaty camp counselor chic. If it looks like I'm sweating in this video, it's because I am uncontrollably sweat. What are we gonna do about that? We have to solve that problem. <laughs> It's Rebecca. I eat books and then I talk about them. I'm currently sweating. Can you see it? Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's 90% humidity. I'm here today because I made a promise. And then let's be real, I broke it. In June, I was like, we're gonna do a read along in the month of June. Everyone rush out, trust me, get this book. We will talk about it. Let me tell ya, it's mid to late July. We have not talked about it. I'm so sorry. Honestly, I was blown away by the participation. You guys are awesome. People rule. Thank you to everyone who participated. And the pressure got to me. How am I going to do justice to everyone who read this? Book is Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. The other reason it was hard to record this video is because feel sort of ambivalent about this book. This was a really important learning experience for me. Thank you all for watching me learn and grow on this journey. If I were to do this again, if I were to ask you all to trust me again, <laughs> A, I would do this in the not busy summer months. I would choose the the low-key winter months when there's less going on. And I would also definitely choose a book that I love, that I know I have a lot to say about, that I'm interested in rereading and need an excuse to reread, and that I haven't talked much about on this channel because I read it years ago before I started this channel. If I were to do this again, would you A, would you ever trust me again? Would you do this with me? Probably not. I've probably lost all of your faith. But if I did this again, I promised you it was a book that I know and love, <laughs> would you join me again? Maybe in the fall. Those are some thoughts. Okay, let's talk about this book. I have some notes here to confer. People sent in their thoughts and I wanna make sure to capture all of those. Did I mention thank you? Thank you so much if you read this book, even if you didn't comment or send me any feedback, if you participated at all. I don't know how loved I feel. First of all, let's talk about pressure. The amount of pressure I felt. Didn't know you could do this, but now I do. There's a way to check Goodreads data for a book. And somebody looked up the data for sleepless nights and there was like a big jump in the number of people who added it to their TBR when I announced this read along. Which is weird because when I make these videos, I feel 99% sure that the only people watching are my parents. And they do not know how to use Goodreads. But there are at least four of you out there and I am full of gratitude and like a little confused about who you are, but mostly full of gratitude for you. All right, so what is this book? Very hard to explain. What is this book? Published in, I believe, 1979. Look at how beautifully sepia toned this is. This is a book that is referenced constantly by authors that I love. This is like a writer's writer and people are constantly referencing this as like a godmother, a tome, a text sacred text of our people, the depressed thinking woman. So it's been on my radar for literally ever. So I just chose this book and then the first line of the book is, it is June. I wrote Kismet. It was, it was Kismet. I chose it for the June read along. And that was the first line. So what is this book about? No one knows, no one knows. If you meet somebody and they say they know what this book is about, they're lying. I looked up the original review. It was written about this book in the New York Times book review when it came out in 1979. That review was written by the one and only Joan Didion. And this is what she said. Sleepless Nights is a novel, but it's a novel in which the subject is memory. The result is less a story about or of a life than a shattered meditation on it. These studies take the form of vignettes, recollections, stories that at first, offer no sustaining thread. 
that is how I felt. This is also one of the first, I think, instances of really auto fiction. We know that the this is a novel. The main character is an I and a named narrator, but the I has a lot of autobiographical facts in common with Elizabeth Hardwick. So growing up in Kentucky, moving to New York. We follow this person, narrator as they travel through these different locations in their life and observe the world around them. A collection of observations and people they meet. I'm struggling here. There is not a lot of narrative. Now, your girl loves a plotless book. I love a plotless book. This takes plotless book to a whole new dimension. Abby sent me a video that was like plotless, to the max, this is the ultimate Rebecca book. And she's not wrong. I think the thing about this book is that it is the ultimate Rebecca book in that it inspired so many Rebecca books. I could appreciate this book while not necessarily enjoying the reading experience. Some of the very obvious influences. First of all, Cusk. The Outline Trilogy feels to me like a direct descendant of this book. Main character, the narrator, as just a conduit from what they see or hear to the reader. Only learning about this narrator from their experiences and conversations with others. So this felt very much like a godparent of the Outline Trilogy. I also saw a lot of Jenny Awful, what we think of as the modern day fragmentary novel. I saw the seeds of that here as well. When you look at the pages, they don't look like a Jenny Awful text. They look like a traditional paragraph, but it really reads like fragments, which I actually found very vindicating. I think that there's this thing going around where people say like fragmentary text is a lazy millennial thing. Actually, no, it's been around forever and it's beautiful and it's important. So Didion says, at first it feels like these reflections and vignettes offer no sustaining thread. And I would say, yes, I hear you, Joan. That is my impression. And she goes on to say in her view, the meticulously transcribed histories begin to yield a terrible point although not one that would astonish our mothers and grandmothers. In the culture under study, life ends badly. I see that definitely as a theme, yes. Life is hard, especially for the women in this book. But I also felt like not sure that, A, that is enough for me to consider a sustaining thread, and B, I'm not sure I got there on my own. Lauren sent me a message and said this book had a little bit too much big brain energy for me and I, I felt that as well. Jessica said it felt like reading this book was sort of like in one ear and out the other and I also feel that way. Really hard to grab onto any narrative arc, any sustaining thread, and therefore it was really hard to remember what happened in the book. To put it down and pick it up was very difficult for me. Selena said that she felt like her brain switched off while she was reading it, and I totally feel, felt that way too. And as somebody who, like all of us, are, are readers, we read difficult books, we read different styles of books, and are used to a challenging read. It was sort of disconcerting to come to a book that was so distracting or hard to attend to. I haven't felt that way in a really long time. I thought that was interesting. I would say that what this book was strongest in was setting. Beautiful descriptions of setting. If anything about the book was engrossing, it was, for me, absolutely the descriptions of setting. I thought this book had a great sense of place. There's a segment in which she lives in the Schuyler Hotel in New York City. Lauren sent me a message and said she loved the melancholy in New York City vibe. Lauren, I love that description. That is so true. I could feel nostalgic about that melancholy in New York City vibe for a book that was written in the 70s. I was not there. All right, and here's what we really need to talk about, y'all. Here's the tea. This book is dated. It feels really dated. I read and have read, especially recently, books that were published more than a few years ago. Cassandra the Wedding, Natalia Ginsburg, I read Marguerite Duras. There are often books from a previous time and people say it all the time. It was so relevant. It felt like it could have been written yesterday. Okay, yeah, except for that the entire plot structure relies on the absence of cell phones or internet. But this stands as a stark counterpoint 
to that. Whenever somebody's like, it really feels like this book could have been written yesterday, and you're like, show me a book that doesn't feel that way, there is a universal human experience, longing and loneliness that transcend date and time. But if you need a counterpoint, you need to know what it feels like to read a book that doesn't feel like it could be written yesterday, this is that book to me. Partially because it was already so difficult to attend to and to stay into the narrative, it was so distracted. I was trying really hard to stay in the story and then she would say something, she would write something like, my friend chose to become a homosexual and it was so jarring. Any semblance of trying to be in the story that I had at all, it threw me so far out that I was like, I can't get into this. There were offensive things, there were dated things, there was a lot of class issue. Jen was like, yeah, borderline racist, and I agree. 1979 was not that long ago. Also, <laughs> we need to talk about this picture. Jen's copy had the author photo. Please look at this. This is not hip bohemian 1960s Joan Didion, right? This is my grandma having high tea with pearls. Not my grandma, but this is you, somebody's grandma. She's not in San Francisco slouching towards Bethlehem, you know? Lindsay wrote me this beautiful email that I found to be very illuminating. She's got big brain energy for sure. She commented on the outdatedness and the cringe worthiness of so many parts of this book. But she also had an interesting perspective on it. She said, I do think that the book contains attempts at recognition, empathy, and curiosity of how other people, especially across class, are holding their experiences. People who transgress certain norms or standards of the time or face injustices. I think we can read that through our modern lens and appreciate a way of writing about the self and beyond the self that influences books since. I think that's a really intelligent, honest way to look at this. I think it's hard to consider how we look at outdated books. Like I mentioned, I think this is an important book. I think that I owe a lot to this book and to Elizabeth Hardwick. So many books that I love are born out of this work. I want to understand understand and appreciate and have a critical lens. I don't want to say this is useless or trash should never have happened, but I, I also want to be able to read it with a critical eye and say, thank goodness we don't write like this anymore. Thank goodness we have strong female, non-male writers in our world that we can look up to today who have critical perspectives and are able to see beyond just the female perspective in across class, sexuality, gender, race, etc. Oh, I didn't mention this, but this book has been translated into a million languages and so many people found copies of this book in different languages and sent me pictures and that made my heart grow three sizes. Somebody, yeah, it was Jen, she went to her library to ask for a copy and they were like, we have to take this out of the archives. It has not been checked out in 30 years. She was the first person to check this book out since 1990. I love that. Real revival of Elizabeth Hardwick this summer. All right, I want to play for you what Jessica sent me. Jessica from Jessica's Book Stack. If you didn't know, we have like, a budding friendship, I would say. She sent me a beautiful voice memo with her thoughts about the book, so let's listen to that together so we can pick apart what she said. Just kidding. I remember feeling very in tune, like we agreed on a lot about this book. I kind of went in just assuming I would love it, and I came out not really loving it as much as I thought I would. Let's pause there to note how gentle she's being, because, by the way, everyone, I spoke to was like, interesting choice. That's what I was saying about using your trust earlier. Collectively, nobody loved this book. Nobody came back and was like, you picked a banger. But I love how gently she's trying to tell me that here. She's worried that she's gonna hurt my feelings. So sweet. Shockingly dense. Apparently Elizabeth Hardwick was, says every book needs a story, but it doesn't need a plot. And I like, it feels like she's kind of like the OG, you know, thinky female writer who is developing plotless novels. I felt like the stronger points, the points I really got sucked in, were when she was actually like talking about people. So much told us about other people. I, I think it's very much in the tradition of authors that I do love, for example, Maggie Nelson or Rachel Koss or even Joan Didion. I definitely feel like she is maybe like the mother of that tradition 
of observational, thoughtless books. She sounds very academic and very intellectual, but that doesn't mean I necessarily enjoyed the act of reading it. She's definitely a smart lady. I think she's a good storyteller. I wish more of the stories were just a bit more developed for me, especially because it's my first time reading her. And the last, uh, let's be honest. I, so I'm happy I read it. I didn't enjoy all parts of it, but I'd probably give it like three stars, or maybe three and a half. I rated it three stars as well on Goodreads. Not that star ratings mean literally anything. All right, thank you again to everyone who read. If you did read or have ever read and you didn't get to send me your thoughts, please put them in the comments below. Also let me know in the comments below if you would ever trust me to choose another book like this. I promise it won't be for several more months and I will do a little bit more research next time. I don't know if you know this, but I really love you. All you nerds out there, I love you. Thanks for playing along. They can't all be winners, you know?